guys. Um, so I decided to pop on to uh, make a video for you because I wanted to show you how I reuse cardboard um, and how I'm currently trying to use up some of the cardboard that I have. I have a whole box and I mean like a huge box <laughs> and I need to get through some of it because I have saved literally everything that is cardboard over the past month probably out of my house. Um, that includes like grocery, um, boxes of, you know, cereal boxes and pasta boxes and um, anything I've bought, you can see like just things I've bought. I have kept and am uh, in the process of trying to use up. So, I mean, I have saved literally every scrap of um, cardboard and I am covering them. So, I was going to show you what I'm doing. I'm thinking of doing a, um, a little art, um, I don't want to call it a, um, a hunt of some sort. Um, I don't want to call it a scavenger hunt, but I feel like um, I have so much of this cardboard um, and lots of materials that I would like to get rid of, um, that I'd like to use up and get rid of, that I thought about making um, kind of a an art hunt um, that I could share and just make lots of little pieces of art and hide them all over my area. Um, just while I'm at the grocery store or while I'm um, out at the park or if I'm at Walmart or, or wherever I'm headed um, to just hide a piece of art, which means I'm gonna have to make sure they're weatherproofed um, because I don't know how long they'll sit there. And then I'm gonna put some information on the back of my art. Of course, I'm gonna have to dress these up, but put some information on the back of my art that links to my social media so that they can get in touch with me and let me know who they are, where they found the art, where they're from, and what they plan on doing with it. So um, I'm gonna set that up, but I was gonna show you kind of what I was doing. So this, I believe, was part of a, um, oh, I bought a bulk <laughs> off Amazon because I love Folgers Black Silk. This is my favorite coffee, and I literally, I've tried Starbucks, I've tried like everything. Um, brewing my own coffee, I like black silk. That's just the favorite that I have. And so um, I bought a bulk order from Amazon of like, I don't know, it was like three months worth um, for a really good price, way cheaper than I could even get it at Walmart. And I have a ton of these little boxes. Um, and, you know, because they open at the top, half of the box is just a really weird shape. And um, I wasn't going to be able to make journals out of them. So I cut them into squares. I squared them off or rectangles um, and decided that I would start um, pulling them apart so that I could use them. I thought about making just my, my regular um, stacked tags. If you follow me on Instagram, then you know I've, I've been getting into making stacked or layered tags here lately. Um, and gosh, I should have one nearby, but I don't know in this mess that I have on my desk right now, cause I'm, I've been doing this. Um, the, the layered tags where everything stands up off the surface of the, um, the substrate. So I decided I was gonna do that and cut them into small pieces, but then I was like, oh, these are perfectly good middle, you know, medium size. I could make tags out of them. Um, or then I had had this idea where I was going to make um, art and hide it all over my city, especially because I live in a tourist area. I think it would be fun for tourists to, to kind of find a little piece of art that they could keep as a souvenir of their trip here. So I started um, playing with just layering. Um, I've been also doing the Jelly Arts Challenge for March, um, which is a March... Um, they have a, a different challenge every day, and uh, it's just a March printing challenge. I think that's the hashtag for it. And so I decided I was gonna start doing that, but I ended up with a ton, because every time I jelly print, I jelly print a million things. I love jelly printing. It's one of my favorite things to do. And so um, this was from the Rainbow Day. I had lots of scraps, and I thought I can cover the, um, I, I need to start using some of these painted papers. I can cover the cardboard with these things and then draw or paint something on top. And uh, I decided to do that. So I am doing my substrates right now. So 
I've been using up just scraps of things that I want to get rid of, layering with um, matte medium. And the uh, literally almost all of the folders black silk boxes are used up. Um, so I am just kind of collaging this stuff. This is one I'm going to probably add to it, but this is Hilton Head Island because I live um, right outside of Hilton Head Island. And I wanted to add something on it, but I really liked this one because it has um, from February some of the uh, high tide and low tide times. Um, which is kind of fun. And so I thought, you know, if nothing else, this would be really cute as a souvenir for someone. Um, so I'm going to start adding some things. Um, I really liked this one too. This was a jelly print challenge for, um, I think the first day it was flowers. Um, and I've been putting tissue paper over the top and I'm really liking, um, what it ends up looking like because it kind of mutes the colors. Uh, I haven't put the tissue paper over all these, but but I, I did it on both of these. I really like um, the way it mutes out the background, and then you can just kind of add to the background. But I think I'm also going to add um, some sort of hand-drawn or um, some sort of image to them. But, but nevertheless, um, I started just adding things to this cardboard. Um, to, to make backgrounds and then I'm gonna try to layer and add to and I really liked this one because it was a little different I have this tissue paper that I got at Dollar Tree a long time ago I think it's wedding tissue paper and I've been using up some of my labels that I stamped with my um, my text uh, stamps which this is in French um, and I have some other ones that are bigger but um, I've been kind of adding labels and kind of trying to obscure the background of these cardboard pieces. And then layering the tissue paper over it definitely obscures it. You can see that there's text beneath it, but you can't really read it as much. Um, so I thought this was fun. I thought this was kind of an interesting way to, to use up my um, cardboard stash that I have because I definitely have too much right now. And I thought I would kind of take you along on the journey. So I am going to add some things to these and hopefully record um, kind of what they end up looking like. But this is just an idea if you have a lot of cardboard laying around and need to get rid of it or, um, I, you know, again, I'm one of those people that I love to reuse things. I don't want these to end up in landfills if they can be reused. I could just go recycle my cardboard stash, but this is good for art. Uh, art making and art practice. So um, I am trying to use up everything that I can that is, uh, you know, reusable um, material that's free because, you know, art supplies get really expensive. So uh, tell me what you think of this um, and, and I will add the clip after this of what these end up like. But I also thought I might make one for you of the background just to show you how I do this. So, um, how I might obscure this. Now, I'm going to have to add something to the back as well because it's, you know, it's torn up a little bit and it, this is not the strongest cardboard. I may have to even glue it to a larger piece of cardboard to make it stronger. But just as a background, um, I'm going to start adding stuff and I, you know, I have just random pieces of paper all over the place. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my brush here. I have my water. Um, I've been having to kind of thin down because this matte medium gets when it, uh, gets kind of tacky and half dry, it starts to like clump up. But, um, this is the golden soft gel matte and I use this to, um, to glue all of my stuff down. It's supposed to dry pretty transparent, which I like because you can still see everything through it. But all I'm going to do, you can see around the edges, it kind of gums up. Um, all I'm going to do is start adding things to this cardboard to make it a little bit obscured so that we can't read, you know, the, the label part of it. And I'm going to grab this cloth so that I'm not dripping all over my, and I'm just using this, this, um, medium size brush. This is the one I use for matte medium. So it's a little, 
gnarly. <laughs> but, um, so I'm just gonna start taking some things and putting them down. I usually don't put it on the back of the paper because the paper ends up getting really um, wild. I'm gonna try to smooth it down with my fingers first and then I go on top. And some some of this paper, this was coffee dyed, so it, it's gonna get a little bubbly. Um, if I wanted to smooth it out, I could use maybe a, um, one of these um, scrapers, but I don't really wanna do that. One, because um, the paper gets so very, um, fragile. Do I want to put some painted paper in here? I think this one's going to be more, um, I have this like, I have these like globe pictures that I got out of the science book that I've been pulling pages out of to, um, make my altered journal. So I may actually even put those down. Um, but I think I'm gonna keep to just kind of a neutral palette at first. I just kind of keep brushing it on until it looks like that paper is, is sticking, sticking pretty well. Um, and I usually do have to go around and do the edges again because the edges are a little bit difficult, usually. So this part is pretty um, pretty up to you how you want to do it. You can always keep layering and you're going to eventually come up with a design. If you want the, just the background to be the base of the design, um, you want it to be an important design feature, then you, know, you may want to add different things. I'm just trying to um, establish some sort of base that doesn't have really recognizable text um, and obscure, like I said, obscure the, the background. I've got some paper here. I'm trying to look for a good variety of text. Here's some I mean, I don't have to cover every square inch. Just um, on some of these tags, I have just covered, you know, what's recognizable. So theoretically, you know, I could I could just cover to right there, and you wouldn't be able to see that. But I don't for this tag or for this um, for this background. I don't think that I want to see that red quite so much. I've been shying away here lately from the bright colors. I don't know why that is. I love bright color. And in a lot of my finished products, I've been shying away from that bright color. I've been going more towards neutrals here recently. And I don't know why that is. Um, I go through phases where everything has to be bright color. My desk is such a mess that I'm picking up pieces of, of different things here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, but I've been really shying away from, from those things for some reason. And then I think just for fun, I may add some of these label stickers that I've made, um, just because I'm seeing some things through this other paper. And I had some, I have this label that I messed up, um, that I put text on top of. So I may add that up here. Let me put the straight edge up here. And um, mm, I could do a little ticket. I don't think I'm going to do a ticket though. That's more of a finished. I guess we'll do a little bit more. A tiny strip of this. 
going right up here because I can still see the LAC in the black silk there. And I'm going a little bit slower than I normally do. A lot of times I'm not thinking about it quite as much, but since I'm having to talk about it out loud on the video, um, it's, you know, it's taking me a little bit longer, but you can see. So it's not special here. I'm gonna trim the edges here in just a second, but then I love, um, this was paper I got at Dollar Tree a long time ago. I've had it for years. I'm pretty sure they still have this. Uh, if they don't, they have something similar, but it says to have and to hold from this day forward. I don't necessarily want that on the um, the background. I don't want this to be like a wedding or anything like that. If you do, then then that's cool. But um, And I forgot I have this little image too. I think that might be a little too much. So instead of um, crossing it out or tearing and, and doing full pieces um, put together. I'm just, because this is big enough for my tag or big enough for my background, I'm turning it over because it's not as easy, easily read uh, when I turn it over. And I'm going to put it down that way. So uh, what I do when I get everything on the background ready to put the um, paper on, I just kind of do a general layer, not too thick, but thick enough that it's not going to dry before I get my paper on. Because if you do it really thin, this stuff can dry pretty fast um, or it can set pretty fast. So I'm going to pull it taut, lay it down and smooth it out with my fingers. And I am not going to put anything on top of it right now. Um, I figure that if I'm adding something to the top of it, later that I want this to be um, a little less layered. And what I like is through the tissue paper, you can still see some of those elements of text. You can read some of them, um, but this tissue paper is obscured now. Um, you can see some of the texture and the design that it adds, but you can't really read what it says on the tissue paper. So if you have a tissue paper or if you see a tissue paper and you're out and you, you come across one that's cheap, um, that has kind of a pretty text uh, or pretty designs, but it has a text that you don't like, keep in mind that when you're decoupaging or collaging, you can uh, reverse it. Tissue paper is very thin. So whenever you are laying it down, it's gonna change. and all of a sudden it becomes this pretty kind of um, difference in value and elements and also tone. You see a little bit of blue from this tissue paper. You see some really dark parchment paper looking um, tone. You've got some lighter tone um, and, and we've got a lot of elements of writing and uh, I like how this kind of circle has, has popped out, has come through. Uh, so, I mean, I think it's it's an interesting background if I'm going to add something on top of it. Um, so, this literally takes like 10 seconds to make if you have the materials in front of you. Uh, so, I recommend trying this um, after I get some things laid down on these backgrounds so that they are complete pieces of art. Um, I will film and, and photograph those, but um, I just thought that this might be a fun idea if you have a bunch of stuff um, around that you need to thin out like I do very clearly. My craft room is, um, is a nightmare right now. <laughs> so um, think about how you might be able to use these, um, these materials in different ways. I think giving away art is, is, is a fun idea. So I am going to hopefully add something really pretty to this that um, somebody might want to actually take as a souvenir. Um, but you may wanna exchange them with other artists. You may wanna make artist trading cards out of them. Um, just kind of, I, I would encourage you to look around your house and think about how can I reuse this in my art? Because a lot of times, um, uh, you know, as an art teacher, I think about a lot of times in art history, we have 
a lot of artists that used what they had available and that those were the artists that were able to make a difference in the um, in the art world. So think about the things that you can use that um, help push your practice forward. And then, you know, you can always include these in your junk journals or in your art journals. Um, I think it's fun to, to include these as backgrounds. You can always, you know, map medium this down to uh, a background, um, one of your pages in your journals. So uh, you could do it as a tip in or make a pocket out of it. So there's a lot of things you can do with this, um, but I thought I would show you how I am playing with it and what I intend to do with it. And hopefully uh, you guys will get to see the finished product. Okay, so here's an example of just a piece of art I, I may add to this, I, I don't know yet, but um, a piece of art that I made on the cardboard um, scraps that I have. I think I'm gonna mount this onto something. And then I made myself a QR code online in a free generator and I have a thermal printer. So um, all I did was go ahead and thermal print these um, on labels so that I can stick them on the back. And when you cut them, um, I cut them on my paper cutter. Uh, when you cut them, they just become little QR code stickers. And so I thought I would go ahead and slap that on the back of a piece of art and people can scan this and it goes to my Instagram page. Uh, which also links to my YouTube. So um, I thought this was a good way to keep in touch. I also am probably going to add a QR code for maybe a Google form that I am going to set up to have people sign in like a, a digital scrapbook um, of where they're from and they can kind of tell me a little bit about themselves and um, kind of make it an interactive experience so that they are um, able to to interact with somebody that lives in the area. So uh, I hope this has given you some ideas about what to do um, maybe with your art. If you are interested in, in interacting with more people, um, this may be a good way. It may give you some, um, some way to reach out to people that you may not have even met before. Um, so hopefully that's a, a cool idea for you. Happy crafting!